Mi gente, what's good? My name is DJ Integrity. I am the host of Mix Mondays. And what you're about to see is a recap of a past interview that we have done on Twitch. Make sure that you're following us there, Oxen Brand Music. And then also like and subscribe for more content like this. Dale. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, because I was definitely taking way too long. So I appreciate your patience, homie. Give it up for the homie, Jay Violet. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? If you could let our audience know uh, a little bit about who Jay Violet actually is. Oh, man, uh, Jay Violet is a lot of things. Um, Jay Violet is a person who loves to create, loves to be innovative, um, inspire. Um, and he's a very chill guy. So I, I like to implement all that uh, into, into music um, and kind of make sure that, you know, when I create, people are able to connect to how I'm feeling throughout, you know, I'm just going through day to day basis. So that's Jay yeah. Violet. Very chill. That's what's up. That's what's up. I like how you actually just kept yourself third person throughout the whole time. <laughs> the whole time yeah. <laughs> hey, so, okay, so cool. So I, uh, again, first knew you more as this like smooth R&B type what would you kind of define is your genre? Like, how, how would you define yourself uh, as an artist um, in regards of a genre? It's so funny because, like, <laughs> I do so much and, you know, I dip in, like, so many genres. I couldn't even, probably, I'm not going to lie, between, like, soul, so R&B and pop. So if there is something in okay. between R&B and, and, and pop, that's probably where I fit at most likely. And then I love to make hip hop music on it, like, you know, just for fun. So R and B and pop most likely. So, okay. I know, I know it's always really tough because especially as an artist, right. Um, you know, you don't really want to get put into boxes, right. And that's where, you know, mm -hmm. um, people will feel a certain way, but I will say this though. And, and I, I want to know how you feel about this. I will say there is at least some benefit to, um, even though, yes, you have some versatility to at least label yourself as some kind of genre or at least a song kind of some genre because, for instance, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm playing all these smooth vibe stuff. So uh, if I'm wanting some music to listen to in my car and it's one, I want that groove, I want to be able to search up, for instance, R&B, and I want to see J Violet. Like, I want that name to pop up. Um, mm -hmm. So as an artist, is that something that you, like, do you intentionally want to be able to put yourself in kind of a genre that people will understand and kind of uh, be able to search you better? Or are you like, nah, I would rather you just kind of find me however. I don't, I don't know how else to ask that question. No, the first way you put it, um, I'm kind of, so I used to be the type, like I said, I used to be the type of guy that like the dibble and dabble and experiment uh, just to figure out the stuff that I love to make. And I realized that I enjoy making very like soulful uh, love music, um, just, music that that hits people's hearts so now in 2022 i will be making more of r&b songs um so i think a genre uh off of what you said um i think r&b is is something that that really uh touches my heart and i want people to understand that that's kind of the direction i'm going towards and honestly what i really enjoy about um this, again stumbling onto your art is mm -hmm. as far as i know uh, there, there hasn't really been a lot of um, Christian um, R and B, right? Uh, now, for you, and it's it's that normal discussion. You know, do you do you intentionally um, do R and B music with a um, Christian like message? Like you're 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 trying to almost kind of speak the gospel or whatever uh, into it, or um, it, it, it's it's that conversation of are you a Christian R&B artist? Are you an R&B <laughs> artist that's Christian? Like how do you how do you when you go through your music, okay, your process of music, um, not just the creative process in the sense of you know how do you make your verses and hooks and all that, but as far as content, as far as content goes, what is your process like when you come up with content? I think that yeah, that's that's a tough question. Um, what is my process? Honestly, it varies. Um, sometimes I'll, I like. I can be with my family and I'll have an idea right in and there. I'll have like a melody um, and I'll like have to go to this, you know, like in my room, like little bedroom studio and uh, put it down. Um, sometimes it comes off of listening to uh, other people's songs and I'm super inspired by that. Um, but uh, most likely it's, it's me just spending time with my family and my friends 
uh, that kind of, they really inspire me to, to just live and take a moment uh, away from um, the music career and kind of just, you know, be in the moment. And it kind of inspires me to have another kind of drive, if that makes sense, to, to create. So um, just spending time with my family kind of inspires me to build upon um, music and stuff and, and, and create and be in that process, which is kind of weird, but that's just how I get inspired literally yeah so. yeah so you uh so you're saying you 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 like to partake in life right instead yep, of just basically. write about it yep yeah yep. yeah yeah no i get it the 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 being the present right being the present i think um not even just as artists like uh, i would say youth pastors right any kind of any kind of people who are tending to create things that are um also helpful for other people you can get caught up almost doing more for someone else than actually taking in for yourself rather it's life rather it's your own message whatever the case may yep. be do you end up finding yourself um, creating music for others more so than for yourself, or like how do you how do you balance that? Where it's like, okay, I want to create this, but um, th- there's this need or there's this uh, group that I'm trying to get to as well. Wow, um, yeah. Sometimes um, you may not be able to have um, uh a testimony that's uh, that's built upon whatever you went through, whatever struggle that you went through. Um, sometimes I have uh, friends that may go through something or I've seen something uh, that uh, triggered something in my mind to go create, um, which can t- touch other people's hearts. Um, um, say for instance, the new song I dropped, Eyes on Him, Other Than My Boy Bats. Uh, that song was based upon seeing other people going through uh, day-to-day basis going to their jobs and enjoying life and i see that and it inspires me to go create because of what i've seen so it doesn't mm. really have to be upon, like about me it's like okay dang i see that or so if some if i'm having a normal conversation with one of, one of my friends and they're telling me about their day and it's like that inspires me to go create so that's that's a that's a really good question um it's not just me it's it's the people i talk to it's who i see uh, and it's what I, I observe basically uh, to create. So yeah, that's a really good question. Man, that's crazy. Hey, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I know. I know. We, uh, you know, we we have we have we got some questions right to go over. And then nine times yeah. out of ten, I don't I don't even remember half the <laughs> the questions we go <laughs> we go through. Uh, my team's probably like, why do we even do this? No, nah, so no, nah, it's good. It's good. No, I love it. And and the the biggest thing that we like to do here on uh, on our Twitch stream is we like to give a lot of behind the scenes, right? The meaning and stuff, mm-hmm. and the process, and all that kind of stuff. And so, the stuff that I would say, you know, as an artist, do you you know you do you do you tend to wish that you can invite the audience back you know into the back uh stage area you know of your work and everything else or are you a person that's like nah just like polish work only i want you to f- see the finish nah um behind the scenes I, I i'm i want people to understand that it takes a lot of hard work uh to see the polish to see the the finished product um and it takes a a lot of work to be able to to get to that point Right. So a lot of people ask the question of like, oh, bro, how did you get there? Or how did you do this? And it's like, it's this step, this step, and this step, and then this right. step, and this step, and this step. But the, all they see is the forefront of like, you know, you're in front of the camera or you're on stage and doing that. And they don't see what goes on. So I would love one day to have a documentary and show people like, you know, what I do behind the scenes and the prayers that I have for my pastor and all, you know what I'm saying? So, so people can see what it takes to be able to get to that point. So yeah, behind the scenes, I'd rather do behind the scenes. For those of you guys uh, who are just joining in or who are probably lurking in the background, if you haven't already clicked on the links uh, that are in the chat, make sure you guys follow Jay on his social medias as well uh, as getting his music. But on your IG, uh, I saw something that kind of that stuck out to me a little bit, and I wanted you to unpack it a little bit. Um, there's a there's a uh, a thing in there in your bio that says that you are. Um, uh, and actually, I want to make sure that I read this correctly. Uh, that you are comfortable being broken. Can you unpack what does that mean? Comfortable being broken. That's huge. Uh, I used to be a person that enjoyed having a mask in front of me, trying to be perfect. Um, and I feel like a lot of us Christians, um, we get to a point where you know we want to please God as much as we can, and you know we tend to forget some of the things that we do go through. 
and we try to tame it as much as possible. And so for me, um, in my life, I've changed that this year, wanting to understand that I'm human and that I have emotions and there's gonna be ups and downs. So it's just me saying, guys, I can connect to you even if you're not a Christian and to help you understand that I go through the same things as you're going through. Being comfortable, broken, you know, being being somebody that that's not perfect, you know? So I, I understand that I'm not perfect. And so I just wanted people to understand that in a very simple context, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I like I like the one line deep meaning stuff, right? That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I like it. So okay, so with the um, you know, not not being perfect, when when did you feel like and, and this could be an ongoing process, I don't know. Um, when did you feel like you have finally reached a point where you were content of like you know, you you don't have to be perfect. That you're that you cannot be perfect no matter what it is. So what 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 got you to that point? Mm. Wow. It was earlier, actually late, actually late summer, uh, around early August. I was in the middle of the process of uh, making a couple songs for the end of this year. I realized I've heard a lot of people uh, pretending that I'm okay all the time. And I used to say things like, <laughs> and this is just me, I used to say things like, oh yeah, everything's good, God is good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and kind of just like went on my way and they used to be like, oh, okay, yeah, Jay's good. Okay, cool. But in deep inside, I was hurting. So I realized that for myself, I can't do that to the people that I love and to the mm. people that may, you know, not know me and realize that I'm in, as I'm in this music career and, you know, now people are getting uh, beginning to know my name. Before that, things even grow, I want to, I want people to connect with me that, you know, that could be more on the authentic level than fakeness. I want to make sure that I'm comfortable with myself and I'm, I'm able to forgive myself and um, have a closer relationship with God in the most realest form and express that. So that's when I realized late summer, so not too long ago, a couple months ago. That's cool. So, okay. So is, do you feel like it's a point of which that you've, you know, you've reached and don't got to look back and you keep going or is it like something that you have to continue to remind yourself and refocus recenter on it that i have to continue to remind myself um sometimes i could be a squirrel too you know kind of fly, <laughs> fly <laughs> the flash the web. yeah i have a lot of squirrel moments i have a lot of ups and downs um sometimes i tend to go back to that defensive wall and put the mask up again um, you know i have friends and i have family that uh that hold me accountable like hey chill out a little bit you know let go of that you know so yeah, yeah. I, I go through it yeah sure yeah no I, I think we all we all do um what are some things some components because um you know a lot of things that we we know we're not perfect right or like consciously right consciously we know that we're not perfect um you know in in, in the in the reality of things we know that um uh, but you know i feel like everyone still gets plagued with that you know that feeling of uh inadequacy right or you know just just not, that not feeling enough um what are some steps of which that you've done that you have used that you currently use um, to kind of keep battling those things? Because you know you you just got done saying it is something you have to keep refocusing, recentering on. Is it something that you just kind of like verbally, you know, like a mantra almost, kind of like say to yourself over and over? Or what what are some steps? What are some things that you practically do tangibly um, that maybe some others could could learn from? Man, uh, it's so funny. God is that was good. I just recently learned this. Um, I've been, you know, going through some stuff and some of the things that my parents have taught me, uh, I used to struggle with feeling like I'm alone or feel like uh, I'm by myself sometimes. So in order to help out with that, I've always, you know, if, if I get into the mindset, I always say, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. I would just repeat that. Uh, mm, you're special. Yeah, yeah. You're somebody. And as I continue to, to do that, uh, it actually helps, like, how you, like, calm myself down. So yeah. whoever that, you know, may be going through the same thing. Uh, also, if you, um, I used to, like, have, like, a notepad and just kind of write it down. And I have, like, a uh, some tape and I'll put it on the wall. So before I get up, oh, actually, after I get up and get ready for the day, I'll look at it. And it kind of just remind myself 
uh, and also have scripture because uh, the word is is powerful and it helps out with Amen. everything. So um, that and uh, just understanding self love. Self love is 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 key to life sometimes. So yeah, just uh, repeating to yourself and having people that are accountable to um, that definitely helps. So 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 something that I always touch on anytime we talk about anything like this is. You know, if you're in a certain funk, um, it would be safe to say that it'd probably not be beneficial to um, be surrounded around people who are not necessarily going the direction that you want. So, for instance, if I want to get out of drama, I probably shouldn't be constantly around somebody who always has drama, right? Um, yeah. Or maybe I have to do some self-reflecting and being like, well, maybe I'm the person in the group <laughs> that is causing all the drama or that... Uh, is always upset about something. There's always something wrong or whatever. So, is how how uh, intentional are you about your uh, what we would refer to, obviously, as an inner circle? Yeah, my inner circle is very very small, <laughs> um, and because of that, um, I realized some things that I've done in the past, right? Where it's like, oh shoot, maybe that wasn't my friends. Maybe that was myself. I'm like, oh man, now I have to rethink about <laughs> some of the things. I've said, uh, pray to God, like, okay, what is that that I can learn to, to get grow uh, better for myself? So um, I think having a uh, literally a small, like, circle, small little <laughs> so, circle, <yeah. laughs> a small it's circle, super small. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is super key because uh, those are the people uh, that are going to have your backs. And I think having people in your life uh, that's not going to give 100% like you are, uh, it's not going to help you in the long run. Um, and you will be able to see that. Uh, you see the difference, you know. So for me, I have, you know, my family, my girlfriend, my best friend, and then, you know, that's that's pretty much it. You like, keep that mug tight. I, yeah, I, yeah. I see why you were like that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I see why you were making it that small. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, but you know, but that's hey, that's that's true, you know, and and uh, it's also good to have people, not maybe necessarily in your inner circle, but definitely at least around um, of people who push back, um, you know, w with things, because obviously if you get a bunch of yes men, or um, I I think where I always worry is some people will uh, do their best to try to surround themselves around some positive stuff, right? But mm -hmm. unintentionally, and I think we we might have all done this one one way or another, unintentionally uh, turn into a leech. Right. Where we, we set up everybody around us to help us to be able to grow us and whatnot. But it almost becomes so much of like, you know, I'm always willing to love, but like you're not loving me enough. You're not loving. And we almost get like clingy Ooh. slash leech and where we are blinded sometimes, uh, depending on where we are. Right. In our walk with with Christ or in, our, in life in general, um, we tend to start hurting those relationships, not knowing that we were the leech that we were the one that was actually trying to suck everybody's joy and we weren't adding value. Is there anything mm. that you ever really worked through, um, like that rather, uh, personally with you or around you? The, le you, uh, the leech part, like understanding. Yeah. That, yeah. Know? Yeah. Where you, where you found yourself, um, taking more, uh, you know, receiving more, more than giving. It's okay. If, mm. if not, like you ain't gotta be like, you know, wholly b balanced person, you know, like, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's the, actually, it's the most simplest thing uh, with my family. Um, the biggest mm. thing was uh, was music, uh, and at the time, I'm a very hard. Uh, I, I was super hard, um, and so I was very focused, one minded. Music, uh, I would spend the whole day just ripping through music, and I wasn't spending time with them. So it kind of almost like split, you know, me and my family. Um, music was like wow. the, the the barrier uh, in between. So after understanding that I was hurting my family because of what I was passionately doing, but understanding that I didn't have a balance between life and music, you know, that can get kind of crazy. So that was something that I learned that I was, that was a leech. You know, I realized I was like, Oh, I was the problem. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I was, I was so focused on building my career, you know, doing this and this and that with music and making connections that I forgot about my family. So, yeah, and I think yeah. especially now we live in a culture that, um, you know, if you get caught up with like the Gary Vee speeches and the E.T. and all that and like like those yeah. are great and, and th those are stories. Don't get me wrong, but um, 
certain personalities, certain mindsets, and I would, I would say uh, sounds something that you have similar that you get so much of like get up and grind, get up and grind um, that you forget to sit down and shut down like for yes. a little while. Yes. How how important has that rest period um, been for you to, to be able to unplug? This is the most I've ever <laughs> like rested. <laughs> um, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I've, we've spent a lot of vacations, you know what I'm saying, chilling. Because um, usually I'm a go, 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 go. Yeah. Um, so um, that's it's super important, you know. Uh, you need your body to rest. You need to rest uh, because... Uh, being on overdrive all the time is unhealthy, and I know. So, um, oh, this man said yeah. overdraft. That that brings yeah. me back to some days. <laughs> I'm not banking <laughs> overdraft statement. Like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm trying to. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I I try to make sure I get even uh, eight hours of sleep. That's hard to get, but I yeah. I try my best to, to get that uh, and, and actually just actually even being still, not doing nothing, but being still and kind of just chilling with your family uh, is, is huge. So could you unpack what that song is, what it means to you uh, and also kind of the process behind Solid Gold? Oh, man, Solid Gold is actually one of my favorite, 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 favorite songs uh, that I have made. Um, I made it with my boy Adamant. If y'all don't know Adam, and, uh, he's a great guy. Um, that song was particularly made out of uh, the feeling that I had when I was at a wedding uh, with a special somebody. And um, that feeling that I had there was one of the greatest feelings I've had uh, ever. And I wanted to make sure that uh, whatever style B that I use, uh, that it you know, particularly uh, aims towards what I felt at the wedding. Um, and it's about just loving your person hard <laughs> and, um, and being loyal, being faithful and understanding that, you know, through ups and ups and downs, you know, you always be there. And I love, I love, uh, like Hallmark movies. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Always retain, <laughs> so I always retain like, you know, that kind of story, uh, in my head. Now I talked to Adamant about that and he was like, yo, like, yeah, we got to do something like that. And so. Within a couple of days, we, we made the song. Uh, it, it was originally called, in fact, it was originally called Silent Gold. And that didn't make sense. So, <laughs> Okay, uh, I was uh, like, yeah, I think I like Silent Gold better. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that did not make sense at all. Um, and so we changed it to Solid Gold uh, and stuck out. So That's cool. Nish, Nisha said, what? Guys like Hallmark movies? Yes. Yes. Uh, guys. Oh, yeah guys do we may not uh all necessarily you know uh sit around you know and talk about yo do you see how so-and-so got together last night in that show you're like, <laughs> like we're not we're not doing that now now okay so so as being an rb artist i want to say most people kind of have this thought process that you're already uh um a romanticist you know is that something that you would kind of coin yourself as are you are you kind of a romanticist in a way yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, I don't I love, know how I want to say it right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually, I really, I love love. I, I, something about love. I, uh, it's something you can always talk about. And I think it's something positive to always talk about. And I think people, not just you know, romantically, but particularly like just love. Uh, I think we need in the world. Um, so I love talking about love in my songs and i i think people are starting to see that uh that takes effect on them too so <laughs> so yeah, yeah i'm just gonna continue to make that so no that's great man and we we need it i was just thinking about it uh you know as i was preparing for the show today i was kind of thinking about like man um this is great to be able to find artists like you who do like to talk about love and and um, again, having a Christian mindset, now, knowing that you have a biblical worldview, that you are looking through the lens of Scripture um, when you're thinking about love. You're not thinking the perversion of it. You're not thinking about self-satisfying, uh, self-seeking. Um, you know, you're, you're definitely thinking of, you know, how in Corinthians talking about love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, does not boast. Um, you know, that 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 stuff, it, it always sounds pretty and always sounds good, but 
you know, when you listen to Usher, when you listen to Chris Brown, when you listen to certain things or whatever of people who are or are talking about what they would perceive as love, it's um, you kind of find often than more than not, especially what's being put out on you know mainstream. Um, it's more self-seeking. It's more self-satisfying. It's more self-pleasure. More self, uh, quote unquote, love. You know, and uh, and yeah. I think when you start to pervert love as self-love, which obviously there's some balance, right? Don't get me wrong, but um, you know, it, it 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 tends the scale tends to tip really hard one way or the other, right? Especially yeah. as a Christian. Um, I was talking to uh, so uh, Christmas Eve got a chance to do a dance performance. I was talking to uh, a, a young lady named Maraca actually, um, and we were talking about uh, uh, understanding her value, right? She she creates scars and all these different things or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool, you charge. She's like, no, I do it for free. And I'm like, ooh, pump the brakes. Here's here's my personality. I'm like, nah, God gave you that gift for a reason, right? And it's not so that you can take this, what we would do as Christians, this like humble uh, approach where it's like, you know, no, I don't want to take anything from it. No, whatever. When scripture is clear, mm -hmm. right, that, that, that the worker is worth their wages, right? Like you're doing work and God gave you that talent, and that ability, and you're giving glory to him and your focus is him. It's not self set. So with somebody with love, right, somebody like you creating um, music for art, uh, you, you know, uh, for art's sake, but also with love in, in, in mind um, to to be not self-seeking and being able to express like, yo, this is exactly what it should be like. Um, that's that's mm -hmm. super huge, man. So I appreciate your heart on, on that. So it, yes, the homie Jay Violet and Adamant was solid gold. Yo, that song, that song is it's a it's a nice beat. Like it's just a different BPM as well. Like are you. Were you strategic as like, uh, uh, you know, how, how, did, how did you find that beat? Did somebody create it for you? Is that something that you were like specifically looking for? Like what was, how'd that come about? Um, so I know this guy named C, uh, MCX. He's this producer off of YouTube. Um, I think before I even got into this limelight, I, I was able to connect with a few uh, now major producers that are, uh, on YouTube or make music for like major artists out there. Um, and he's a guy that loves making like Jaden Smith type beats. If that makes sense. So, um, yeah, yeah. and I usually don't do tight beats anymore. Usually I, I do like exclusives and I found this one. I hit him up. I was like, bro, like this is definitely a love story. <laughs> and he was like, for real? <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro. I said, let me let me just hop on it. Like, let me let me let me show you how uh, how to make it. He's like, all right, bet. So I knew Adamant was a good tone for a chorus or a hook. Everybody yeah. like Adamant has this this tone that I I always tell him like I'm jealous of. Like he, he just he's he's a good singer. He he tells himself that he's not, but he is. Yeah. Oh, and I so, agree with you, bro. I agree with you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So um i called him i was like yo bro we got it let me show you this beat he's like oh this is fire what what like what are we going to talk about i said well we're going to talk about love and he's like all right it's man, about like, love <laughs> 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 um, so um yeah I, I we uh built off of that and we had a conversation before i like to have conversations before uh building a song uh, i think that's it's very uh i guess important um, because I want to make sure everything's authentic uh, before we even get into the creative field. Uh, oh, I like that. Okay. Yeah, be able to connect on personal level and then uh, going and making a song. A lot of people don't do don't do that these days, but um, so that's what I did with MCX and Adamant, and then so we all built that beat. We took out some things, then I sent it to Adamant. Adamant has a few people that he knows, and we kind of changed the arrangement and made a song out of it so yeah that's that's made a nice song yeah hey that's what's up that's what's up well the chat the chat was definitely enjoying it and uh jada mosley was saying hey we should make a song about love so you got another r&b artist in here too so you never you never know you never know but i, I like how um you said that so yes for, the, for those of you guys who are new to some behind the scenes stuff especially even in, in uh christian music um not a lot of people and mainstream as well not a lot of people do actually build relationships it is literally um you know you pay for this feature and okay i'm gonna get work done and then i'll never hear from you or see you again until mm. you know the song blows up and then all of a sudden <laughs> we bff so uh what what is that what has that been for you to intentionally build relationships versus like 
like do you do you normally do you have people who are like hey let's just have a feature and like they don't even try to develop a relationship with you i've had a few that just wanted to do a feature uh and dip out uh, <laughs> um i've learned from my parents you know not to burn bridges so yeah like i think building a connection uh fella like actually i'll give you a story like between adam and i like he lives near me right so i was able to like hey let's meet up and let's talk and let's let's hang for a little bit and kind of connect on on a deeper level and then you know make music after that i think connecting with people personally uh can create a bigger you could, i think you could create a lot more hits uh when you're on like you know a brother a brother a brother sister uh yeah. connection um just from fellowshipping and, and and sitting down or reading the word with each other or something like that um but i have seen a lot of people that just are all business and i've done music that's just business um because you know they maybe they don't want to talk or i don't, I don't know Everybody has their preferences. I, I like to connect. I like to talk to people. I love talking. I love conversations. So yeah, for sure. And like the chat is uh, is saying right now, friends friends are the best. It's plus, you know, it's another friend. You get to make another exactly. friend. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing, bro. You just never know. You never know how i'm gonna come out like right you especially when you got new people you got new people and they're like yo what's this button do <laughs> and then bam like filter galore nah nah dj rev hey hey they, that's good i appreciate you i appreciate you coming in for the follow as well uh and activating that filter so that's love man that's love uh so so we were talking about friends um and uh, uh, I, I do definitely want to make sure that we touch on this because this is a very important conversation. So we're talking about making friends and having actual friends as artists, not just uh, sitting down and, uh, you know, trading for a check and, you know, and, you know, peace out. Um, man, yep, there goes another filter. I kind of kind of knew that was going on. So uh, shout out for you to being able to stay focused, Jay, because <laughs> I was trying not to look at the monitor at all. <laughs> and I'm like... Hmm, my head got really big all of a sudden. What, what happened? So, all right. Anyways, I'm going to try to keep going on with this. Uh, so um, let me know uh, when it comes to your friendships, right? We're talking about uh, discipleship. So the one thing about here at Oxen uh, that we are more focused on than anything else is disciples, right? So that's why we have our app. Uh, it's a free app called Oxen Team Network. Simply just yokes together true disciples of Jesus uh, to not only to read uh, God's word, but to obey what it says to do so that together we can continue to make uh, more disciples, right? Disciples making disciples. And so that is the number one foundation when it comes to the Oxen brand. So speaking of discipleship, speaking of friends, um, what does discipleship look like currently in your life right now, Jay? It's just beginning um, because before um, I, you know, just, I would say like, turning back and the reason why because like i said i've been through ups and downs but now i'm like reshifting like who my friends are um and the kind of people i want in my circle and so lately i've been uh just connecting with some friends uh that are willing to uh go out and go bowling you know what i'm saying and, and kind of like chill and and come together and laugh a little bit and then later on sit down and actually read the word pray together um usually we come uh get we'll go get coffee or something like that and yeah. after we'll go leave but before we you know go separate ways we'll pray uh s simple stuff like that and i i honestly i'm trying to get better with discipleship uh that's i think that's a major thing and i'm just now learning uh to be honest uh but um those are the things that are that are implemented in my life right now um just making sure the people that are surrounded by me have the same mindset and want to be able to grow as a christian so and so with with discipleship too um it could also be rolled into mentorship do you have anybody currently uh in your life who who's older so anytime i talk to anybody it doesn't matter what the age um when they when they talk about you know surrounding themselves like-minded stuff totally agree i'm with you on that too um but i always it's like one of those things that like I, I would rather say than assume 
um, that w- we ought to always have somebody who is also older, right? More experienced. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather it be our parents, rather it be uh, you know a, a pastoral person, and some somebody, some kind of you know influence. You know, for me, uh, there were some great men um, at the church uh, when I first started going in the summer of two thousand. Um, you know, and and they took me in, and they became you know my mentors in discipleship. Do you have? Um, anybody who's older, uh, and, and if so, or e- e- even if not, um, what would be some advice that you would give to somebody who's like, Hey, you know what? I want to have some great friends around me, you know, or, or maybe I'm getting friends, but they're not super rooted in Christ. They're kind of like God mm-hmm. is love and that's about it. And which is great. Right. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Where, yeah. you know, yeah. where it's like, yeah. Okay, we all we all agree, you know, uh, you know these little certain things, but they don't dive in deep. What are some kind of? Um, let me let me say this question better because I'm I'm kind of going off here. Um, what are some kind of ways and tips uh, that you have personally done to build this circle um, of discipleship of not just people around your age, but even older? Like, what would you say to somebody who's seeking that out? Um, some steps on how to do that. First, the first step is they have to be comfortable in order, you know, to take the first step, right? I think the first step is, okay, are you willing to come and join our group? Are you willing to step into a church, you know, uh, setting? Are you, are, are you really, are you willing to openly, like, hear and learn about uh, what's in the Bible? Um, I think taking the first step is, is, is major. So that's kind of the first thing that I, I tell them. Um, just to see where their head is at. And also, you know, they're, the people that I know, you know, their beliefs could be a little bit different and they want to know more about, you know, discipleship, uh, even if they're older or they're around my age or even younger. Um, so I, that those, that's kind of like how I like, hey, so uh, what are you doing? Do you want to come hang with me and my friends? Da, da, da. Are you willing to do that? Are you comfortable? You know, even if you're uncomfortable, that's good because, you know, you have, I feel, I feel like in, in order to grow, you got to be uncomfortable. Um, so I, I just kind of make sure that they feel like home before I, uh, I guess the right word, indulge or uh, kind of take the first step of like inviting them to, I guess, like a hangout or uh, I don't know what, what another word would be, but that that's kind of, that's kind of what I do. Um I go to, I have plenty of mentors. I have my father, I have my uncle, I have my pa- you know, my, as my pastor. I have uh, Bruce Long. I have uh, I mean, my first mentor who's actually uh, got me to make music. So I have oh, a few people in my life that I so I go to ask questions. Uh, so I, I, I'm still learning myself. But that that's the, what I do, you know, inviting people to learn more about uh, God and jesus so yeah yeah so you don't just uh you don't just run up to him and just say, excuse excuse me sir can i tell you about our lord savior jesus <laughs> and just start taking nah, all nah, running <laughs> nah. yeah because it's, it's a little it's a little different i think it's, it's a little different nowadays i think because yeah. of uh what goes what's going on in the world and uh, or how they grew up in the background maybe they grew up in a big box um and like they're scared to come back because of that or a push of religion and you know questions like those you know it, it kind of like they have this like defensive wall so you want to make sure that you know you kind of bring them up like a cup of coffee you know sit down with you know some donuts and kind of yeah. like make sure they feel welcome more than just forcing uh your beliefs on them uh i think that's that's to me, like that's how i do it i don't want to like make sure i, I don't i don't want to enforce something that i i believe to somebody that you know that's not willing to hear me out you know so so in terms of necessarily uh like you were saying being willing being willing to um uh receive you know being able being being willing because some people will say you know hey i really want some close friends or i want people who are going to challenge me and whatever and then as soon as they do they don't like they show very quickly like ah no you really you really not ready for it How, how would somebody process that from from a outside perspective so for instance if i was coming to you and saying hey i really want you to challenge me brother i want to be close you know to god i really want more um this that and the set and third and then you finally you know kind of go to challenge me on something and i i back off what would you kind of do what was something tangible that uh somebody could do to work through something like that that's normal 
I feel, I feel like. Um, and the reason why I say that's normal when, you know, the first instinct of a uh, human is to, oh, nah, like, this ain't it for me. Like, oh, maybe I was wrong about that. It's like, no, nah, buddy, it's, a, it's okay. Because that's what I used to do. You know, I will back off. I backed off plenty of times. So it's kind of like helping them understand your testimony, right? And what you've been through and the, the, your faith and knowing that, you know, you failed plenty of times to help them see like, this is normal. You're not the only person mm, that's, 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 been, that's been through that. And so as I explain that, or as I uh, express what I've been through, I think they're able to like, okay, okay. Let's, let's actually try this like one more time. And I think once you, once they're, like I said, once they're open and once they're comfortable, um, I think they're able to, uh, how, how would you put it? Like be more uh, into uh, what you're talking about. So yeah, I would just express uh, my experiences that I've, that I've been through and I'm able to connect with them through that yeah. personally. Yeah. yeah, no, that's good. Just be real, right? Just be real. Don't, just don't, be uh, real. Don't uh don't don't try to dress it up or whatever. I, I think that was going to be one of the points that I was going to bring up that like no matter what you've done, it's kind of screwed up, you know, um, continually screw up, whatever. Um, just be, you know, be transparent, but also be wise. You know, you can't be telling everybody your business. Um, you know, uh, not everybody's ready for that. And technically, you're not always are you ready, ready for that as well, too. Exactly. You're like, oh, I like to be transparent. And uh, then you try to be transparent a little bit too much. And you're like, oh, you know what? I probably shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be this transparent. <laughs> it's okay exactly. to have, have some people who don't know stuff. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yep. I think uh, sometimes you could be a, uh, sometimes I could be a hypocrite of myself, right? So sometimes I'll say stuff that I need to learn that I told them to, you know what I'm saying? To, yeah. you know how when you help somebody out and then that's the lesson that you got to learn for yourself, you'd be like, oh, yep. shoot. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I totally get it. <laughs> so last, not last minutes, last final thoughts that you have uh, for our audience. Um, what are some things that uh, people kind of look forward to, to get in touch with you, all that kind of stuff? What do you want to leave w- with our audience? Guys, just go out there and be yourself. I think um, the more you understand how God has made you and understand who you are uh, and strengthening those weaknesses, um, praying every day and being the best version of yourself, God will be able to bless you through that. So just continue to be yourselves. Um, be ready for more music in 2022 if y'all listen to my music. And I can't wait to uh, talk with y'all through that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, Go kill it out hey, there, guys. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I man, Seriously, hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate your heart. Uh, make sure you guys are following him on Instagram. Uh, he does pop up on some Instagram lives um everybody everybody be on instagram live so um but make sure you guys hit him up follow uh keep up with them you guys uh shout out some some great love to his new track called solid gold um yeah just stay tuned keep it locked guys and uh and of course we'll we'll try to have him back on the show a little bit later on uh as he's getting busy in 2022 bro i appreciate you thank you for having me on really Yo, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Hopefully you found any of this content useful. And if you did, make sure you like and subscribe. And of course, hit that notification bell so you can be notified for the next time that we upload anything. However, make sure that you're also following us on all of our social media platforms. And of course, we want to see you guys live in the chat in our Twitch. So make sure that you guys are following us there as well. Love you guys. Peace.